In just over two years, James Webb Space Telescope has been able to make some really incredible discoveries, providing us with incredible images we've never had before, but also showing us the distant universe in a way we could not imagine. And even during the first year of its observations, it started to make some groundbreaking discoveries that could not be possibly seen by the previous telescopes such as Hubble. And some of these strange, hard to explain discoveries have been explored in previous videos you can find in the description below, but today we're going to discuss one that just keeps coming back. Because with every single observation, due to its extreme sensitivity, James Webb has been continuously discovering a series of unusual little red dots in various regions of the night sky. Visible in pretty much every single image and present in numbers that's very difficult to ignore. And though obviously the initial assumption was that these were probably ancient galaxies, after multiple observations and a lot of different studies, a lot of researchers are actually not certain anymore. And so, a wonderful person, this is Anton. Today we're going to discuss a few more studies about these bizarre objects, talk about what we actually know and don't know about them, and basically discuss little red dots. And that's essentially the name that was given to these objects, because currently it's not really known what they are. And here let's I guess start with this. This graph shows us a kind of a timeline of modern astronomy. Here you can actually see that up until I guess late 1960s, we've mostly been aware of various galactic clusters and extremely bright galaxies in the vicinity of the Milky Way, but could not really see that far back in time. Then in the early 1970s, this was the birth of radio astronomy, and this is essentially when we discovered quasars. Extremely bright objects, powered by supermassive black holes, but whose brightness was the result of an extremely massive and extremely powerful accretion disk orbiting the black hole. And also, of course, the jets that seemed to be produced as a result of the magnetic field inside the accretion disk. And then eventually, in the early 2000s, we actually even started finding galaxies that were so far away that they were still hidden by the neutral hydrogen, or essentially they were present when the universe was still not ionized during these so-called cosmological dark ages. These were known as the Lyman Bray galaxies and they were first discovered by the Hubble Space Telescope and then later on by Subaru and WM Keck telescopes. And now, in the 2020s, we've reached a new era. The era of JWST that essentially allows us to see even further. But at this point, we're not even certain what exactly we're looking at. But based on previous observations of various quasars, since both seem to appear as red dots, these discoveries from the James Webb were possibly assumed to be something similar. Maybe massive black holes, maybe distant star-bursting galaxies, or maybe signs of super-powerful galactic collisions. But whatever it was, it seemed to be everywhere. These little red dots were first discovered in the Iger survey, emission line galaxies and intergalactic gas in the epoch of reionization, and also in the Fresco survey, that stands for First Reionization Epoch Spectroscopically Complete Observation, the two surveys whose purpose was to basically find a bunch of galaxies super super far away. And while well, initially, as more and more of these objects were discovered, the obvious first explanation was supermassive black holes. So basically something similar to a quasar, but just a little bit farther away. And in the last two years we've actually did discover a few quasars at really far away distances in the first 700 million years after the Big Bang. And so maybe these red dots were somewhat similar, just not as impressive. So in other words, maybe these red dots were just small versions of these extreme quasars. And while well, by observing a few of them in a little bit more detail, some of them actually did possess what the scientists refer to as a wide line profile. Specifically, this refers to the hydrogen line, with the width of the line suggesting that this gas is just moving extremely fast around something, implying that it was orbiting some kind of a central massive object. And so because of these signs of a small hydrogen gas cloud moving extremely rapidly, the implication here was that there must have been a supermassive black hole in the middle, but black holes that have not actually formed a coherent accretion disk yet, and for the lack of better words, were just baby quasars. We've actually discussed three such objects discovered recently, and you can find this video in the description that talks about this a little bit more. And so if correct, this would imply that eventually, all of this dust would disappear and these obscured massive black holes would probably become typical quasars. But obviously not everyone agreed with this interpretation, especially because other studies discovered other stuff. For example, separate studies 
discovered that there's a lot of extreme, very intense starburst activity consisting of very young stars less than 5 million years old. And this was also seen in a lot of spectroscopic data, with the overall energy production possibly coming from extremely powerful OB stars, with only some contribution from the central black hole, with both sets of studies providing just enough evidence to suggest that these red dots were either super compact galaxies full of incredibly powerful stars, or very compact objects surrounded by dust but hiding massive central black holes. And there was enough evidence for both. But I guess what's even more surprising is that these were everywhere. Hundreds of these objects were discovered in just the first year and more and more were found in every single new image. With every new discovery making these little red dots even more mysterious. Mostly because they just didn't really make sense. As a matter of fact, some of them were so bright and so luminous that technically they shouldn't even exist. If these were black holes, they were basically consuming way more mass than black holes can consume. And if these were starburst galaxies, for some reason they were producing way more light and way more energy than anything we've ever seen. And though obviously, maybe this is something in between and maybe this is just a combination of both of these, so basically black holes and starburst galaxies, the issue here is that both of these explanations actually contain fundamental problems. For example, if all of this is formed by powerful starlight, then these objects are producing so many stars and at such a high rate, it would actually produce modern universe that's way way too massive compared to what it actually is. In other words, if we basically estimate the amount of mass produced here by these little red dots, they would produce the universe that's just unrealistic. In contrast, if all of this is a result of black holes, then these black holes have to be gigantic, way bigger than expected, and representing masses way more massive than the actual galaxy. Now if you watched the previous video, this was basically the conclusion we came to in that video, because it's the only one that didn't seem to break a lot of rules. But the problem here is that we don't actually have an explanation for how these black holes would form or where they came from. The only way for these black holes to be possible is to basically form supermassive right after the Big Bang. And that also creates a bunch of problems, especially for our assumptions that the universe should be more or less homogeneous everywhere. It should not have these supermassive chunks suddenly appearing out of nowhere. And so at the moment we just don't have an explanation that fits well with all of the models we have and with the observations we're getting from the James Webb Space Telescope. So something here is still missing. And so far, no one out there has been able to explain any of this, even though so many people have tried. But because these little red dots are literally everywhere, and because they have these strange properties, this is probably the biggest and the most important mystery coming out of James Webb in the last two years. As a matter of fact, the mystery here gets even more intense as you start analyzing the stars. As we've discussed in that previous video, for some reason many of these little red dots contain stars that possess old age. Basically stars that are hundreds of millions of years old, suggesting that all of this formed literally all at once, possibly 200 to 300 million years after the Big Bang. And because of this unusual sudden instant formation, it's somewhat difficult to explain. It's not how stars form today and it's definitely not something we see around us in any of the nearby galaxies. And on top of having old stars, they're also surprisingly dim in the X-ray wavelengths that doesn't make sense if they contained a lot of powerful objects such as black holes and starburst regions. In modern universe, these types of objects usually contain huge amounts of X-rays. Here though, not so much. And so because we keep finding more and more of these objects everywhere, and because they seem to be so strange and so difficult to explain, a lot of researchers are now basically focusing on trying to conduct more observations and conduct spectroscopic analysis of what's inside of these little red dots in order to finally explain what's up. But for now, for I guess at least a few more months, this is just going to remain a mystery. A mystery that I'm sure is going to be solved in the next few years. And so until then, or until we learn something else, that's all I wanted to mention. Check out similar videos in the description below. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support the channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.